Okay, now this is part four. <clears throat> Yeshua has just brought Lazarus back from the dead, basically by calling to him to come out. And he came out. Now I found myself thinking, hmm, you know, was this some sort of plot? You know, he was just hiding in the tomb to create sort of more belief, but I don't think it was necessary. Well, blatantly was necessary as part of God's plan, but um, for them to sort of lie and make stuff up at that point after he'd helped blind people see, you know, sort of irrefutable, someone had been blind from birth, there would have been no need for it. Um, so, you know, that so bringing Lazarus back from the dead, he's been dead for four days, they thought he'd be stinking, but he's come back to life and so that is by far the greatest m miracle of healing so far and here we are sort of Yeshua's already referred to when he will be glorified so we're heading towards that point you know he knows he's executing God's plan so we are up to John eleven forty three. 45, sorry. Now many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what Yeshua did put their faith in him. But some of them went off to the Pharisees and reported what he had done. Thereupon the chief priests and the Pharisees convened a meeting of the council. What action are we taking, they said. This man is performing many signs. If we leave him alone... Like this, the whole populace will believe in him. Then the Romans will come and sweep away our temple and our nation. But one of them, Cephas, who was a high priest that year, said, You know nothing whatever. You do not use your judgment. It is more in your interest that one man should die for the people than that the whole nation should be destroyed. He did not say this of his own accord. But as the high priest in office that year, he was prophesying that Yeshua would die for the nation, would not die for the nation alone, but to gather together the scattered children of God. So from that day on, they plotted his death. Accordingly, Yeshua no longer went about publicly in Judea, but left that region for the country bordering on the desert and came to a tan town called Ephraim where he stayed with his disciples. The Jewish Passover was now at hand, and many people went up from the country to Jerusalem to purify themselves before the festival. They looked out for Jesus, Yeshua, and as they stood in the temple they asked one another, What do you think? Perhaps he is not coming to the festival. Now the chief priests and the Pharisees had given orders that anyone who knew where he was should give information so that they might arrest him. Six days before the Passover festival, Yeshua came to Bethany, where Lazarus lived, whom he had raised from the dead. There a supper was given in his honour, at which Martha served, and Lazarus sat among the guests with Yeshua. Then Mary brought a pound of a very costly perfume, pure oil of nard, and anointed the feet of Yeshua, and wiped them with her hair till the house was filled with the fragrance. At this, Judas Iscariot, a disciple of his, the one who was to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for thirty pounds and given to the poor? He said this not out of care for the poor, but because he was a thief. He used to pilfer money put into the common purse, which was in his charge. Leave her alone, said Yeshua. Let her keep it till the day when she prepares for my burial. For you have the poor among you always, but you will not always have me. A great number of the Jews heard that he was there, and came not only to see Yeshua, but also Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. The chief priests then resolved to do away with Lazarus as well, since on his account many Jews were going over to Yeshua and putting their faith in him. The next day the great body of pilgrims who had come to the festival, hearing that Yeshua was on the way to Jerusalem, 
took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessings on him who comes in the name of the Lord. God bless the King of Israel. Yeshua found a donkey and mounted it, in accordance with the text of Scripture. Fear no more, daughter of Zion. See your king is coming, mounted on an ass's colt. At the time his disciples did not understand this, but after Yeshua had been glorified, they remembered that this had been written about him that this had happened to him. The people who were present when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead told what they had seen and heard. That is why the crowd went to meet him. They had heard of this sign that he had performed. The Pharisees said to one another, You see you are doing no good at all, why all the world has gone after him. Among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we should like to see Yeshua. So Philip went and told Andrew, and the two of them went to tell Yeshua. Then Yeshua replied, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. In truth, in very truth I tell you, a grain of wheat remains a solitary grain, unless it falls to the ground and dies. But if it dies, it bears a rich harvest. The man who loves himself is lost, but he who helps, hates himself in this world will be kept safe for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me. Where I am, the serv my servant will be. Whoever serves me will be honoured by my father. So he's approaching his hour of glorification. That's what he's just said. Something to do with talking to these Greeks. Now my soul is in turmoil. And what am I to say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it was for this that I came to this hour. Father, glorify thy name. A voice sounded from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing by said it was thunder, while others said an angel has spoken to him. Yeshua replied, This voice spoke for your sake, not mine. Now this is the hour of judgment for this world. Now shall the prince of this world be driven out, and I shall draw all men to myself. When I am lifted up from the earth, this he said to indicate the kind of death he was to die. <clears throat> the people answered, Our Lord teaches us that the Messiah continues forever. What do you mean by saying that the Son of Man must be lifted up? What Son of Man is this? Yeshua answered them, The light is among you still, but not for long. Go on your way while you have the light, so that darkness may not overtake you. He who journeys in the dark does not know where he is going. While you have the light, trust to the light, so that you may become men of light. After these words, Yeshua went away from them into hiding. <coughs> so there, I think, is another prophecy <coughs> that, you know, the light would soon go away after his... As soon as in, you know, 50 years. And then there would be, you know, another thousand years before another light comes into the world. <clears throat> in spite of the many signs which Yeshua had performed in their presence, they would not believe in him. For the prophet Isaiah's utterance had to be fulfilled. Lord, who has believed what we reported? And to whom has the Lord's power been revealed? So it was that they could not believe, for there is another saying of Isaiah's. He has blinded their eyes and dulled their minds, lest they should see with their eyes and perceive with their minds and turn to me to heal them. Isaiah said this because he saw his glory and spoke about him. For all that, even among those in authority, a number believed in him but would not acknowledge him on account of the Pharisees, for fear of being banned from the synagogue. For they valued their reputation with men, 
rather than the honour which comes from God. So Yeshua cried aloud, When a man believes in me, he believes in him who sent me, rather than in me. Interesting. Read that again. When a man believes in me, he believes in him who sent me, rather than in me. So when he's saying then, believe in me, he's actually saying, believe in God. Seeing me, he sees him who sent me. I have come into the world as light, so that no one who has faith in me should remain in darkness. But if anyone hears my words and pays no regard to them, I am not his judge. I have not come to judge the world, but to save the world. There is a judge for the man who rejects me and does not accept my words. The word that I spoke will be his judge on the last day. I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who sent me has himself commanded me what to say and how to speak. I know that his commands are eternal life. What the Father has said to me, therefore, that is what I speak. John 13 It was before the Passover festival. Yeshua knew that his hour had come, and he must leave this world and go to the Father. He had always loved his own who were in the world, and now he was to show the full extent of his love. The devil had already put it into the mind of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. During supper, Yeshua was well aware that the Father had entrusted everything to him, and that he had come from God, and was going back to God, rose from the table, laid aside his garments, and taking a towel, tied it round him. Then he poured water into a basin, and began to wash his disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel. When it was Simon Peter's turn, Peter said to him, You, Lord, washing my feet? Yeshua replied, You do not understand now what I am doing, but one day you will. Peter said, I will never let you wash my feet, if I do not wash you. Jesus, Yeshua replied, You are not in fellowship with me. Then, Lord, said Simon Peter, Not my feet only, wash my hands and my head as well. Yeshua said, a man who has bathed needs no further washing, he is altogether clean. And if you are clean, though not every one of you, he added the words, not every one of you, because he knew who was going to betray him. After washing their feet and taking his garments again, he sat down. Do you understand what I have done for you? he asked. You call me Master and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Then if I, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash another's feet. I have set you an example. You are to do as I have done for you. In very truth I tell you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor a messenger than the one who sent him. If you know this, happy are you if you act upon it. I am not speaking about all of you. I know who I have chosen. But there is a text of scripture to be fulfilled. He who eats bread with me and turned against me. I tell you this now, before the event, so that when it happens you may believe that I am what I am. In very truth I tell you, he who receives any messenger of mine receives me. Receiving me, he receives the one who sent me. Hmm. So if you receive any messenger of mine, he receives me. That's one for the Paul fans, I think. After saying this, Yeshua exclaimed in deep agitation of spirit, In truth, in very truth, I tell you, one of you is going to betray me. The disciples looked at one another in bewilderment. Whom could he be speaking of? One of them, the disciple he loved, was reclining close beside Yeshua. So Simon Peter nodded to him and said, Ask who it is he means. That disciple, as he reclined, leaned back close to Yeshua and asked, Lord, who is it? Yeshua replied, It is the man who, to whom I give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. 
Then, after dipping it in the dish, he took it out and gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. As soon as Judas had received it, Satan entered him. Yeshua said to him, Do quickly what you have to do. No one at the table understood what he meant by this. Some supposed that, as Judas was in charge of the common purse, Yeshua was telling him to buy what was needed for the festival, or to make some gift to the poor. As soon as Judas had received the bread, he went out. It was night. <clears throat> when he had gone out, Yeshua said, Now the Son of Man is glorified, and in him God is glorified. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and he will glorify him now. My children, for a little longer I am with you. Then you will look for me, and I, and as I told the Jews, I tell you now, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you another. I give you a new commandment: love one another, as I have loved you. So you are to love one another. If there is this love among you, then all will know that you are my disciples. So just there, then we had John, thirteen thirty one. When he had gone out, Yeshua said, Now the Son of Man is glorified, and in him God is glorified. So perhaps that was just the moment where, you know, there's nothing more, no more decisions on his behalf in a sense now. The ball is rolling. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? Yeshua replied, Where I am going you cannot follow me now, but one day you will. Peter said, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Yeshua answered, Will you indeed lay down your life for me? I tell you in very truth, before the cock crows, you will have denied me three times. Take a break there. <clears throat> 